Welcome back to A Drink With Crazy, and today we're going to talk about probably some of the best television that has aired since the first five seasons of Supernatural. I would argue that the first, you know, three or four seasons of Game of Thrones are right up there. Okay, but we're here to talk he about- He hasn't seen Game of Thrones, I, so- yeah, I don't, yeah, I- Apparently. Well, because by the as time- As much of a Tolkien nerd as he is, it's just, just apparently- Well, anyway. the- Subversion and anyway. Oh yeah, no. It's basically if you invert Tolkien, that's Game of Thrones. Anyway, we're talking about the Expanse today, and actually one of the things that's uh, really interesting is uh, he checked out the show, picked up uh, some of the books. He's obviously not read all of them, but we're going to talk I about have some not. of the. We're going to talk about the Expanse, some of the differences between the TV show and uh, the books, uh, predominantly with the characters and uh, a couple and of story beats yeah. here and there. Yeah, just um, a few. I'm, I'm going to really let you excited lead this. I'm this one. really, really excited for He's this. the expanse love, nerd, so I he's going to ask me questions. I love the show. I I'm love an the show. I love the show. It's so good. So it's actually with a pretty good all show. of that being said, roll title card and subscribe and ring the notification bell. Why haven't you already? Do that. Title card goes now. Do it now. Please. Hey. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring that notification bell, and make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. All right, so talking about The Expanse, I've been wanting to do an Expanse episode for a very long time, and I had to convince you- Oh, we'll you... review season five. Yes, that's no, a thing. Yeah, no, that's a thing. I, I sent you the trailer for that. It looks it, pretty good. It looks really good, it actually. Really good. I'm super, super stoked for that. Uh, but one of the things, so I finally convinced you to watch the show, and you finally did. And, you, and well, actually, you didn't have to convince me. It was more getting around to it. Well, and not only that, but the audio in the first season was very not well, not, well he, he, mixed, and you had no, to watch it, it, it with subtitles. No, it was not very well mixed. But here's the thing, is that I am a fidgety person. So when it comes to watching TV, and this is shows I no well right um i tend to do other things these days as flight simulator which is very non yeah demanding but in the past it was like destiny or yeah. things like that can't do that with the expanse no no you cannot you can't no and especially so if it's your first time when, through you when, can't when i first background. when i first started i was sitting there and i think it was destiny i'm sitting there trying to do just strikes or something right. and I realize I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and so start it back over. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. Those first two episodes, if I have one criticism of the show, those first two episodes don't do a heck of a lot to grab you. No, they don't. And that's one of the things about the the, the show. Um, so one of the things that I, I, I love about the show is, that they, at least the writers, they do try to do as much attention to detail when it comes to the science oh, absolutely um they really do pay attention when to gravity physics and actually change. apply yeah in when, that universe um that's characters like, are right. actually people they're not just cardboard cutouts mm -mm. at least mostly yeah um <laughs> and one of the things so so matt watches and he goes you know what it's intrigued me enough i want to read the books and so he starts telling me about the books and some of the things going on in the books i'm like wait a minute what and so one of the things that like really grabbed me is the characters are very different in the book. Same motivation, but they're very differently. Um, and some of it comes down to the fact that the books are written in a very POV style, right? Where you're reading from Holden's perspective, you're reading from uh, Avasarala's perspective, you're reading from uh, Bobby's perspective. Mm -hmm. You're not so in the show. Obviously, you get to see the characters be the characters, mm -hmm. whereas in the books. You know, you're seeing those characters through the lens of Holden, Avasarala, Bobby. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things that I, if I, I could would remember, let, the I mean, name. well, let's let's talk about him is is. is uh, well, you know what? No, let's let's uh, let's, uh, let's save him for later. Yeah, we'll we'll get to him there. At the no, end, no, no, I no, 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 no. I was going to say Holden. Oh, Holden. I was going to okay, say. I thought no, we were talking we'll about my the favorite other character one. later. Yeah. yeah, okay. Which is Amos. Okay. My favorite character in the show is Amos, hands down. Not no questions asked. Like Amos is my. Favorite yeah, character, no, but, it's it's a little different. Uh, um, but um, one of the things that I I think is is interesting is that you said that, um, the way that you described it is that okay, so like. The headline, like if you if you had to summarize, he's like the headline is the same, but the article plays out slightly different. Yeah, no, that's, the that's show a, yeah, and between the show and the books, and so, you, so some timeline things happen very and just differently, different, and just characterization, the way the characters are, at least the way I picture them when I read this, and this might be subjective, I don't know, mm -hmm. but um, when I read Holden's character. It's not one-to-one -one with the show. 
Right. In the show, he comes across very impulsive, very idealistic. Right. Whereas in the book, he comes across idealistic, but more restrained, more guarded, more reserved. Right. As in, so um, for those of you who have seen this and mild spoilers. Yeah, spoilers, uh, season, by the way, this is your yeah, spoiler th- This will be chock full of spoilers. This is your spoiler warning. Bounce now. You have five, four, four three, two, two one. one. Okay, that's All right, your spoiler spoilers. Warning. All right. So when uh, the Canterbury gets blown up and mm-hmm. they're in the little life ship and they are trying to figure out where to go. Yes. In the show, the uh, Donager just shows up. Right. Which leads all the viewers and the crew of the future, Rosinante, mm-hmm. to think that the Martians might have had a hand in it. And it's this big drama building moment. Why would this flagship be out here without right. any warning? In the books... They contact corporate headquarters, they get their orders, and then the Donager shows up. Right. So basically, And even corporate headquarters was like, yeah, they're going to come pick you up. And so that message, yes. And so that message that Holden sends out, which incites all the belters, mm-hmm. saying that Mars destroyed yeah, the, the Canterbury. Canterbury yeah. um, that doesn't play out exactly the same. They do use it as propaganda, but it's more propaganda in the books. Right. In the show, it's... We found a Martian radio transmitter. Ergo, Mars destroyed the Canterbury, and Holden even says that. Whereas in the book, it's, hey, we landed on a derelict ship. We found a thing that has a Martian-labeled battery in it. Please don't kill us. And if we are silenced, look at Mars. It's subtle. It's subtle, but there are differences. it is distinct. Yeah, but there are differences. And so... Some of the things that that happen, I also do know that talking with you, there are characters that don't, um, that they exist in the books, but they're just not talked about. Uh, yeah, they and, don't and show up. For uh, for example, Avasarala doesn't show up until book well, two. Well, no, I, w- I was talking about that uh, that admiral. Um, uh, why can't I remember his name? Gets at, uh, destroyed by Admiral Nguyen. Oh, you're talking about Souther. Yeah, Souther. Or Souther. Yeah, Souther, yeah. yeah. Um, but she, I'm sorry. In the, in the show, she always pronounces yeah, she, Avicerella yeah, always pronounces Souther. Souther. Souther but that but, might be the accent. Yeah, um, but um, but Souther. Um, um, no, and and that's one of the things that was really interesting to me is because I've been asking Matt. I'm like, okay, so like, it like like, are are is the show bad based off of how the books are? And he goes, no, no it's just different. He's like, because the things still happen. But they definitely play out some things for like drama in the show, which may just lend itself to the visual medium. It, it might. Um, some of the biggest criticisms I've had so far, at least, have been that the show definitely plays up the interpersonal drama, mm-hmm. um, especially with the Rasanante crew. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, the biggest example is uh, the proto molecule when they have the sample that they got from that research station mm-hmm. and they have it in the missile. Yes. And they want to shoot it into the sun, and Naomi yeah. refuses and gives it to Fred Johnson without Holden's knowing. Yeah. Does not happen in the book. Yeah. Does not happen in the book. They get the uh, sample. It's in a safe that nobody can open. They have to drill it open, and Holden trades it to Fred Johnson for essentially a sponsorship. He's a lot more mercurial. And that's that's very interesting. And so that whole that whole drama between Holden and Naomi of you lied to me, this, that, and the other, never happens. And that's what's very interesting is that even in those small things, it sounds like the the characterizations are very different in comparison to what we would see in the show. I know. Well, like, here's Holden, another one: Naomi never leaves the ship. Yeah. So in season three, when she's working on the Behemoth, what was formerly the Navu? Yeah. That never happened. Yeah, she was always on the roster. Yeah, and well, and, and and so that's her character what... was actually put into a character named Sam, um, who is the chief engineer, and I forget her last name. Right, but no, named Sam, who is the chief engineer for the OPA, or at least right. Fred Johnson's OPA. Yeah. And that fixes up the Rosinante multiple times and is now the chief engineer on the behemoth slash. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. And so they do combine a lot. With the characters, whereas some of Naomi gets put, you know, or well, I should say some of Sam gets put into Naomi, um, the whole character of um, Ashford yeah, is entirely different. The show Ashford is an amalgamation of like three or four characters. Right. And the book Ashford is just a dick. 
Right. And I, well, and I hear the same with uh, like Drummer. Drummer was the. I have not gotten to Drummer yet. I ho- I've heard she shows up in book five. Right. I've not gotten there yet. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that yeah. her character is actually like three or four different characters. Uh, I, I believe it from what I've seen so far. And, I've not gotten to her book character and, yet. So so but, let's so let's talk about the the crew of the Rossi and let's go, you know, Holden. Um Holden sounds like from what you told me in at least in the show, Holden in the show is very much like internal thought Holden from the books. But definitely does not act like that. Yeah, basically, what the, what the show does is take all the internal and make it external. Right. That's that's all it does. It takes all of his inclinations and just makes him act on it. Right. And so he's the same basic person. Right. But his actions just vary that little bit. So if Holden thinks it in the book, he does it in the show. Right. Yeah. And so how does that change the character for you in uh, between the two mediums? Makes him a lot more impulsive in the show. Yeah. It's just the, and he's, it's not that he's not impulsive in the books. He is, and he gets, you know, raked over the coals by it, uh, or for Actually, it, by One, one, one of the things that whatnot, I, but, I think you told me in the books is that, um, so at least holding in the show, he's never killed anybody. Yeah, in the books, he doesn't care. In the, really? I mean, he cares, but... Yeah, ish. he does, but he has put a <laughs> bullet in some people. A fair few. Uh, when uh, in the Eros segment, when the station's being taken over by the proto molecule, mm-hmm. uh, he gets a little bit on his high horse when Miller starts capping people, mm-hmm. and then he starts capping people, and then by book three, he don't care. Really, and it, that's where the rift with him and Naomi start. Is that especially after book two, where he's just capping people left and right? She's going, man, you're not the gym I know. See, and that's what's so different in this show is that, like, because up to that point, like, he very much struggles with that, and everybody kind of holds him to this. Uh, I think it makes him more sympathetic, especially when you can see that struggle as a right. versus read that struggle. Right. Yeah. Because when you read that struggle, you can get that internal monologue that says, right. kill, don't kill. And when he pulls the trigger, you already have it. But in the show, you're going to only see the gunshot. Right. You're- so you have to kind of expand on that and kind of almost hyperbolize certain traits to get it to translate across visual so, media as opposed to written. Uh, that's so that's interesting, especially. And then, uh, so from one of the things that I know, it, by the way, just if we haven't said it already, the writers are the same. The authors of the books are the writers on the show. No. And they're very good. And they're like, yeah. we're not criticizing anything. Cause obviously we're still going to watch season five. Cause but season- that, that, that just lends itself to what I was just saying is that you have to figure Written versus visual. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I, I, yeah. And so, okay. So now you, so now let's walk over uh, to, you know, Naomi. Naomi actually translates pretty well. Yeah. I think uh, her physical being the only difference because obviously in the book, the belters are really spindly long, yeah. you know, from growing up in zero G. Hard to find actors for that. Yeah. <laughs> I would, yeah, well, so, yeah, so hey, they might so be we're slightly put on the you on a diet side. of some toast for like a year. Yeah. Wait, how much toast today? One toast. One toast. One toast. Oh, and by the way, you're on the ISS. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so you know, obviously, actors are a little hard to find to portray the actual physical differences that are you know explained in the books. Mm-hmm. Um, they do an admirable job with the uh, in, uh, prisoner that Avicerala has in season one. Where they have yeah. him in the yeah in, uh, in like the for a couple first episodes of yeah episodes, indeed three or four I and think he's in like the restraints and then they put him in the water tank that's probably the most accurate representation mm-hmm. of a belter well and I and will they say kind this. of abandoned that later on because that's just impractical you well, might find but one but they did but. do it they and they do still do it anytime they show people on um and some of it just like the hobbits and lord of the rings they do angles and whatnot to yeah, try yeah. and do it but you can tell that just the proportions aren't where the book says they are no no and that's um Naomi what? Naomi's like 8 inches taller than Holden and she's not bigger than Holden cuz Holden's an earther right he's he looks like you and I do yeah cuz he's but, yeah but Naomi, she's like supposed to be like six six or six seven, mm-hmm. which for a woman is really big. But she's really slender. spindly and yeah. slender and really long limbs because zero G. Right. 
And so that doesn't get translated as well in the show because where are you going to find the actors for that? No. Okay. Well, and that makes sense. So they do have to sacrifice. However, I do think that especially in season four on the show, yeah, they did really talk about the problems that she had growing up in zero they, G that, with the cardiovascular system. And they make it a lot more internal. Yeah. In the book, she never goes down. She never goes no, to I know, but, uh, She but never I, goes. So in other words, if they can't find the, the book, actress least, that's, you know, six, seven and really long and spindly and probably would not look like a normal earth person. They exactly. do. They do right into the show that they're they, they, they try and adapt in other ways to make up for the fact. And so, for example, in the book, at least and keep in mind, I'm only about a quarter of the way through of book four, mm-hmm. which is where season four le- uh, le- uh, leaves off on Eyeless. Yeah. Um, with uh, Murtry and all that. Is uh, I'm only a quarter of the way through, but so far she has not come down to the surface. Whereas in the show, she's on the surface day one. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's go to and I. So I, that's some minor I, discrepancies. And here's the problem. He this wants is to like, get the character. This is like the favorite of like the whole like the show like people, the pilot. And I can't remember his name. Oh, Alex. Alex. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. I everybody. Loves him, and I think his I character is actor. awesome. I, I love think, that character. I think he's cool. I do. I love his character. Actually, that one's pretty one-to-one. But he is definitely, he he is not up there in the top No, because he's not that interesting. Show. He's more the steady Eddie. And so in the mm-hmm. books, though, you've said the, the father thing? The father thing is not a thing, but that's background detail. That's, his okay. personality is pretty much unchanged. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anything else about Alex that you know about that that in the books is just different than the show? Or he's supposed to be fat in the books. Oh really? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we he know looks ho- like me in the books. Well, you yeah. Know, we know Hollywood; they can't, you know, cast anybody in a main role. But no, he's That's... supposed to be kind of like this. I think he's supposed to be slightly older than he's portrayed as in right. the show. Like Actually, more that's that one of the late things that I that, that's, that's one of the things that I I have even thought about in the show is how old is Avasarala? Um, in the book, she's like ninety. Keep in mind, they live to like one forty. No, I know they live yeah. to one thirty or one forty. So I'm almost wondering if, as long as you adjust your mindset for that, because I'm like, man, these people have just had experiences like crazy. Yeah, no, I. And then think... when you start to realize, oh well, if you tack on an extra. 40 years to what we live. Exactly. Like, and so Avasarala, it's never given an age in either, as far as I'm aware. Right. But, um, I, I mean, it just, it's, she's supposed to be somewhere in like the nineties to maybe late nineties. See, and that's one of those things that I've and never, she looks really, late sixties. I I've never had it, but again, which that, the actress is with but, life extent yeah. with life extension technology and getting older. The exactly. Body younger. Uh, that's that whole I mean, scene where, um, uh, Aaron Wright and the Mars mm-hmm. uh, ambassador are sitting down, and uh, I just had a new liver. I need to. Yeah, you know, I need to break it in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is something that we would go, wait, what? Exactly. And and you just okay. Or so. the opening shot where the guy loses his arm doing the ice mining. Yeah. And uh, they're talking about who's going to spring for. Are you going to get one of the synthetics, or are you going to get one of the yeah. regrows? And oh, those Earthers ain't going to pay for that and all that. Yeah. And very very good establishing. No, the show is not bad in comparison to the books. It's it's not like Aragon, right? Where well, the adaptation is dude, just I bad. I didn't even like the movie and I never read the books. That yeah. movie was well, it's just a bad atrocious. movie. It's just, it's just a bad just movie. movie. Yeah. But no, it's or even some of the complaints I have with like the Potter movies, right? Yeah. Where they yeah, just Yeah, yeah. You know, they neglect book things that I yeah, they technically work, but you don't get the depth from yeah. them. No, I don't get any of that from this show. Um, I, the show is very good, probably because the writers are the same writers, at and, getting uh, you there. Yeah, I, I think... In that, a visual way versus a written the, way. The now, one the thing written, that disappointed me so much about, from what I was always like, dude, what about Amos? And you were like... We'll, we'll get there real quick. No, there, there, come on. There's two more points I want to touch on real quick before... Well, it's a longer episode. <laughs> it's a anyway. longer episode. So there are two points I want to touch on just real quick before we get on to Amos. See, Moose. Is uh, one Ashford book versus TV show, not even the same person. Not even remotely. Yeah, and which actually, and that's one of the things that said that kind of, in the books you were like, oh, that's kind of sad because I actually really loved the way. I love Ashford. I love I the love, actor. I love, just, I love the, his the portrayal. The way they sent him out. 
all of that. Oh, was everything. Great. Everything about Ashford is fantastic in the show, and he's just a piece of shit in the book. That's and that not, was that was disappointing. Yeah, well, and that sucks. And okay. you know, vice versa, it might have been re- almost redemptive. Right. Had I read first and then watched. Yeah. But no, I mean, and granted, the character does the same things, but just the characterization. The show does his character so much better. He's very one-dimensional in the books. Yeah. Uh, second is... Um, oh, crap. I lost my train of thought. There's another one. Anyway, the thing anyway, that we're moving on. The thing that disappointed me the most oh, was... Sa- oh, no, I remember. Um, it's just the portrayal of violence. It's a lot mm-hmm. more action-heavy in the show. Well, that just fits the visual. A lot, a lot more people get shot in the show than they do in the book. Hopefully, and supposedly in book five, you actually find out more. But Amos, when you told me that Amos, Amos, yes, because Amos is bar none my favorite character in the show, and I, I that I we should actually do an episode on his character. We'll do an We'll we'll touch on him here. We'll give it about two three minutes here. But I. But but yeah. I, I think, well, if we're going to do that, I better stop this thing because it's going to start just, going off. So we'll just Just, stop just it. kill it. And uh, But... Um, sorry, there's a lot to dissect here. A- Amos is... the he, he interests me so much in the show. And when I was like, what so about... So much of that is the actor. That actor is phenomenal. Oh, dude, he's so... He does he such is, a good job. And just, well, he's very, he's very... He acts a lot with his eyes. He does. And he does such a... I yeah. wish I could remember his name, but he does such a great job at that. And one of the things like with Amos is because he is my favorite character. I was like, what about Amos in the books? What about Amos in the books? He's not that big of a factor, to be As honest. As of right now in book As four. As of right now in book four, quarter of the way through and book four. Um, that made me so sad because one of the things, but there's so much development, that whole scene where Holden puts a gun to his head when he's going to shoot the Martians coming through Mm -hmm. never happens. Yeah. Never happens. And that's, that's what he doesn't kill. Um, Miller's buddy in book one. That never happens. No, I actually, from none of that happened. All the characterization for Amos is show exclusive because you only see him through Holden's eyes right and so if holden is not in the room with amos when certain things were supposedly happening in the show then you're not going to see it or and 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 you get some from like avasarala or clarissa Mm -hmm. um clarissa has some experience with amos that's why they had the whole scene where the two are vid chatting right um clarissa mal uh the one yeah season three okay um the one that uh tried to uh but no amos is He's a fascinating character in the show and almost irrelevant in the book. And currently. that makes me so sad because Amos, he's like, like we're going to I could do, we could do an episode on him alone on the show. Yeah. On the but show. Because, because you're seeing it he, POV. he is so, he is so good. He is. There's, there's so I much. Lo- there. I love uh, season four spoilers again. Uh, I love that dark mirror between Murtry and Amos, and I hope they bring that into the book. I'm not far enough in yet, right? I, I, but I hope they. I hope the book keeps that. I am hoping, because I love that parallel. I, well, I'm, I'm really hoping that, that season, Amos supposedly the right book five, person. supposedly book five, you, it, it, that's like you learn a lot more about Amos. You actually get some POV from him. Yeah, I'm really hoping that they explore more of his person because I'm sitting here thinking. And we're just gonna have to do an episode on it because we gotta cut it, dude. We're already over time. Yeah, I know. But but, but Amos, uh, like, it was so sad when you were like, he's not really like he's there, but he's not. Well, he's he, not. He's not so prime in, time. In, in, in the in the show, you see him as this like. Uh, for those of you who watch SG One, he's like a dark tilk. Um, he's very non-emotional and will kill you dead the second you cross him. Right. Whereas in the book, he's a lot more just normal. He's just, he's personable, he's funny, he's energetic, he's perfectly fine. But the second that you try and hurt one of his or his own, then he'll kill you. And that's and that's one of the things that... And like, so, it's not different, except it is, if that makes sense. We honestly, dude, I, we should totally do a dissection. Well, we'll do an Amos episode. I, I've got it, because, you know, the rest of the characters, nobody else has the, la- the level of depth in the writing in that show. That he has. Oh, they're building. Because you and I have talked about these. Like, it's the why? same writers. They wouldn't build it that way if they weren't building to something. I know. And I know. So, so the so fact that I haven't read that far just yeah, means I haven't I, read I, that so far. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know. Have you guys read the books for The Expanse? Have you guys watched the show for The Expanse? If you guys have, let us know what you think down below in the comments section because uh, Matt and I are both really interested in the show. Uh, 
like we're totally waiting for season five because we're gonna review oh, that. Oh, it's gonna be great. I, it's gonna be really good. Amazon did well with season four. Uh, I, no, season four was great. Amazon they did, did well. With I season actually, four. I really like the fact. And sorry, this is film nerd in me. Yeah. I really like the fact that whenever you see Avasarala or they're on the Rasanante or whatever, it's you know full screen. And then whenever you're on Ilus, you're in ultra wide. You're in letterbox. Uh huh. And it gives that kind of claustrophobic sense to uh -huh. it because you can't see as much. And I love it. That's a little filmmaking trick that just makes me go. Oh. <laughs> it's awesome. So let us it's know great. what you guys think about the expanse down below in the comments. And there's a lot we're to gonna do unpack an here. We're going to yeah. do an Amos episode. We have to, because I want to talk about this character. We're going to do it. And with all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching a drink of crazy. We'll see you next time. And until then, cheers, everybody. Cheers guys. Thank you for watching a drink with crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.